So I wanted to say, after listening to smart people like uh, Brad Cook, I always think people are crazy to hand me this microphone. <laughs> I wanted to introduce the crew from Checkpoint. Um, I'm Jason Tutblitz. I'm the senior engineer for the city of Chicago. That means I handle everybody but the top 10 accounts. Uh, I've been at Checkpoint for 10 years. I love our intangible technology. I've seen it solve hundreds of business problems. I've uh, worked on thousands of implementations. Uh, I think our newest code is great. If you have questions about it overall, you're more than welcome to approach any of the Checkpoint people in the room, anybody that looks like me and has Checkpoint written here, uh, and ask them lots of questions. Um, again, this is David Wheeler. He handles the uh, uh, 847 area code. 847815. Okay. And then we have some salespeople in the room from Checkpoint. Uh, where are you guys? Okay. Well, so I had to remind myself to keep it at the lower button here because Mark always tells me I talk too loud. Okay. <laughs> I wanted to mention this. As Mark mentioned, the size of Archon's grown, or actually, uh, yeah, I think it was Mark or Jeff, has grown since starting this whole program at Arlington from a staff of people that organized uh, it being the size of his company now back to, you know, only a couple people. Um, our, his, his company and our product portfolio has gone together. Archon's always been on the cutting edge of implementing solutions that I'm showing them, and I, I trust them to manage the largest companies I have in my area, and, and David does too. I can't say enough good things about him. So partnership is key in, my, in our in our business because you get thrown under the bus otherwise. So if you're Archon's customer, I pledge I'll work really you know, closely with them to make sure your implementations, your support tickets go well. That's what I could say about that. So again, thanks Archon for uh, managing and implementing our next generation security solutions for the biggest companies in the Chicagoland area. Okay, and here's a little bit about our demo. Our demo is, is uh, our anti-bot, which is usually coupled with our antivirus system. Our antivirus system is pretty unique where, in this fact, um, back when we had antivirus on the checkpoint gateways, we had a, a couple of years ago, it was based on a database of about 20,000 signatures. Our newest systems that are coupled with the anti-bot system use a threat cloud, a, a cloud-based system to send MD5 hashes of every single file that passes through your gateway to a database of 3.5 million signatures in the cloud. So we're talking uh, a powerhouse system to find malware and viruses on your network right at the gateway level. There is no way a desktop firewall, I'm sorry, a desktop antivirus solution can do this. So we're pretty confident this is going to find malware and uh, viruses that your systems cannot find currently. Uh, and I wanted to mention that all of this stuff, both the antibot and the antivirus system we're gonna talk about can be coupled with the gateways you probably already own, maybe a little bit of license upgrade, and third, it's a, it's a pretty small CPU hit. Unlike our IPS system and the inspection systems that go along with our data loss prevention tools, uh, they are very low utilizations for the CPU. Actually, they have a tendency to drop the CPUs on the devices since we drop known bad IPs at uh, using a process before the firewall rule base. So on that, I'm gonna hand this over to David and he's gonna start out and I'm just gonna comment a little bit as he goes along. Thank you, Jason, hello everyone. Um, so on our demo today, I'm using VMware, and I have three different systems set up, one being Joe Roberts' desktop, which we can see here on the screen. Joe Roberts, think, think of him as your everyday, day-to-day -day, uh, individual working in an IT environment or a corporate environment. Additionally, I have two other systems, one of them being a remote operator, or the hacker, if you will, who's uh, the command and control server. We're going to actually infect Joe Roberts' desktop with a bot that's going to be communicating with that remote access uh, system. And then the third VM that we have running is a Checkpoint Virtualized Gateway running R7540 Gaia, which has the Antibot software blade currently deployed in just a passive mode where we're just simply analyzing. We're going to flip that into a protect mode here in just a bit. So I wanted to mention that we uh, have been tasked as SCs at Checkpoint to do what's called a 3D security report for our customers. This is a report where we plug into a span port or in line and produce a, an executive level report that talks about the total overall security of an organization. Uh, this tool can be used during that demo process. And I want to say at Checkpoint, for, we are about 100%, maybe a little bit less than for going into clients and doing proof of concepts and finding bots. I'm not talking just in the Chicagoland area. I'm talking about our worldwide security organization does this POC and finds bots about 100% of the time. 
Exactly, and I, I speak from that experience as well. With our 3D security analysis, re 3D security analysis report, I've gone into, I'd say about 98% of my clientele, every single one of them had bots. More of them had, or most of them had multiple bots in their infrastructure, and nobody had any idea that these things were there. Um, with these bots being on the systems, the remote operator basically controls these systems, a lot of times without an impact on the system. And that's exactly what we're gonna see here on Joe Roberts' desktop. So the example I love to give is kind of a, a social engineering attack, if you will, um, based off of information, off of uh, public forums, off of social networking. Someone, the, the remote operator, was able to find out where Joe worked, who's Joe bo who Joe's boss is, what, boss is, in this case, Mark Smith, and that the organization is having a very important company event coming up really soon. Makes you not so eager to post your stuff to LinkedIn or you know, your other social network because they're using this type of information is where they social engineer these types of emails. Exactly. So with this crafted email, Joe received an email that looks like came from Mark Smith, looks like it's for a legitimate company event that he knows is going on. Uh, it says that he needs to register by clicking a link. So not thinking anything about it, Joe clicks the link. Take just a moment here for the connection to go through. What's going on here in the background is we're connecting to the remote operator site. And a seed is being planted on the system from this remote system, which is basically establishing communication with the command and control server. Now, once this communication is initialized, that remote access tool owns the system. Joe Roberts has no idea that anything is going on. Oh, there's always a little bit of death by live demo. Let David refresh. I'm sure it's something simple like an interface fell asleep. We, we actually exactly practiced it. this. But uh, it gets interesting once. Uh, <laughs> Take it just a second to wake it back up. Okay, hopefully that'll do it. That should bring it back. And that should bring that back. Okay, let's try this again. Okay, let's have our imagination t take a step back and let's imagine that just didn't work, look like that. <laughs> There okay, go. cool. Okay, all right. Okay. Try so. it again. One of the fun things with VMware, the uh, interfaces fall asleep after a while. There we go. Connecting through, there we go. This is what we should have seen. Uh, registration completed. Thank you for registering at the company event. Um, I don't know if anybody saw down here in the status bar, it said it was installing uh, event.exe. This is the seed that has been planted for the bot. Now, if I flip back over to the command and control system, we're running a, a tool known as PC Rat, which is a remote access tool. Um, I do apologize, a lot of the text is in Chinese, but we'll still uh, definitely be able to see what's going on here. Right now in the database, the inventory there, we can see Joe Roberts' system. His, uh, Joe Roberts is listed there in the middle as the name of the system. Now, this system, the remote access tool, give it just a second here to come up. There we go. Has the capability of viewing his desktop browsing the file system. Keystroke logging. Keystroke logging. So for instance, let's pull up that keystroke logger here real quick. Let's say that uh, Joe went to a, uh, to a website. Let's say, uh, I don't know, let's say uh, Chase. Let's say he's going to a bank. Give it a second to come up here. And he's gonna go ahead and enter in his credentials. As we know with a, a key logger, well, if it comes up for us. With the key logger, it's going to capture anything that he's typing. It's going to ca capture the request for chase.com. Exactly. So let's say, you know, I'll just kind of jump into Notepad here. Let's say his username was Joe and his password is password. Jumping back to the command and control system now, you can see in the key logger, we captured this information. Once again, Joe has no idea that this is going on. His system isn't acting ill. There's no visualization to him that this is going on. And depending on how the command and control infrastructure is set up related to the bot, this all could be happening over SSL. Exactly. Blind to most firewalls. Now, as I mentioned before, right now we have Checkpoint, uh, the antivirus, anti-bot blade, deployed in a monitor mode. So I went ahead and jumped into our Smart View Tracker system and we can see that an event has been registered. Let me double click into that to give us a little more information here. You can see that the protection name or the detection was win32pcrat.a. Um, malware family belong, belongs to PCRAT. Uh, we detected this 
infection based on communications with command and control. To emphasize what Jason had mentioned, through our threat cloud, we have a large database of all these IP addresses and URLs based on the reputation, in this case, for command and control. And hopefully with the antivirus system, that malware would have never even got there in the first place. So, you know, this is something that 3.5 million signatures should have been able to detect as it w went through. We uh, are just doing this for a demo purpose, so we don't have the AV system on. Exactly. Now, additionally, one of the neat things that goes along with Checkpoint for a lot of our detection methodologies is we have the capability for a packet capture. This packet capture is going to give you a lot more forensic intelligence of what's going on with these communications. The communications initiated, information sent back and forth, and so on. So we have this information here as well. I'll just go ahead and pull it up real quick. Um, cap packet captures can be set up to be different sizes. You can capture a lot of data or little data. Uh, I think me and David exactly. were talking about this. There's not that much data in this one, not but there is lot. enough to see it was the PC rat uh, uh, Trojan through its uh, uh, payload. Exactly, exactly. Give it just a second to pull up here. There we go. So we can see our communications, our source and destination communications. Source being Joe Roberts, destination being the, uh, the remote operator. Um, if I, uh, let's see here, follow the TCP stream, you know, we can see some references in there, PC rat, um, and so on. Like we said, not a whole lot of data here that we can actually go off of, but in a lot of cases, you are going to see some actual clear text transmissions going back and forth mm -hmm. and additional analysis and, information. And we did have RDP going up there, which is very packet heavy. Exactly, exactly. So diving back into Smart View Tracker. Or actually, let's jump right into a smart event. You're going to see a little more information. Uh, with our smart event solution, you have the capability for smart dashboards, timeline views, and additional uh, log correlation showing you the real facts about what occurred with an event. So, so this could be the heads up display in your data center. And that little one that you see right there is the anti bot attack. That indicates an attack. You might have this running all day long and be viewing these incidents as they go. The color key on the top is uh, criticality. And uh, it's very adjustable by the blades you're using. Exactly. So I went ahead and just clicked into the, the, the color code or the, the donut chart, if you will. And it pulls up some very similar information like what we saw, saw through Smart View Tracker, showing you some incident details, what was detected, how was this detected, uh, and so on. Uh, additional information that's very important in there also is amount of data set, simple traffic. How many, how many bytes or kilobytes or megabytes of data had been sent? Do so you have to worry received? about a breach of a database? Exactly, exactly. In this case, okay, 330 bytes were received, 71K was sent. So there's a little bit of information going back and forth here. Imagine if it's hundreds of megs. What kind of information could have been being sent out without anybody knowing what's going on in this particular system? Okay. So, I think David's going to show now how we can protect your organization. Exactly. So let me jump back into Smart View Tracker. I'm going to go ahead and flip into a prevent mode. Um, one nice thing about Checkpoint, you can modify a lot of your policies directly from your logging. So I'm going to go ahead and just right click on this event. I'm going to go ahead and add an exception, and we're going to modify that exception into a prevent clause. So the same with the IPS system, right from the tracker, we can come into here and create these, again, uh, exception scopes. As you see on rule three right here, we have a little exception that we're going to change from detect to prevent. This allows you to run your whole organization in detect while still creating exceptions for when you find the malware to shut down its command and control infrastructure. Exactly. Now, one other thing that's very unique, currently unique, to the antibot and antivirus software blade is when it comes to pushing policy. As many of our checkpoint users know, when you make a modification, whether it's on the application control, URL filtering, firewall, any of the blades across the board, you have to push that policy for those changes to take place. Starting with R7540 with the antibot and antivirus software blade, we now have the capability to push policy just for the specific blade. Now, this allows the separation between network administration and uh, security administration. More or less, everybody's always afraid to push policy at you know, 12 o'clock in the afternoon at the organization. You know, who knows what, what policy changes have been made and what the uh, effects can be. This uh, change comes from the way that our firewall infrastructure works. We've changed from uh, flat file changing to uh, database updates. So you can see this allows us to, throughout our firewall software, you'll see these start types of things happen. A policy push for IPS, a policy push for antibot, antivirus. This, uh, this feature set will continue to grow over the next several years. Question? 
Correct. We're going yes. from an exception uh, option in Tracker. It's automatically creating this rule uh, E three dot one, and we have manually gone to it and changed it from detect to prevent. We have five minutes, Dave. Sure. Nope. 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 Not nope. at all. Not at all. Now I easily could have gone the the, the more traditional route, but I, I took the shortcut. So we went ahead and pushed policy back out. If I jump back into my uh, my VMware system here. More specifically, the command and control system. Let me close this window here. You can see that the database of infected systems is now blocked. Uh, the Joe Roberts system has been more or less remediated. Now, here's what's kind of cool about this antibot blade. We're just blocking the communications with the command and control or the remote operator system. We're still allowing legitimate traffic to go on. We didn't knock the system off the network. He could still go through, check his email, browse the internet, connect to the internal internet and everything, but his system is isolated where it cannot communicate with the command and control server. Additionally, as we saw through SmartView Tracker, we've informed you that the system is infected, so you can actually go back now at your leisure, repair the system, remove the bot, you know, take care of the malware that's on there without having to knock that system offline for the time being. Um, additionally, as I mentioned, we had it in a passive mode, the antibot in a passive mode at first. You very easily could have deployed that in a prevent mode all along and never have been subject to the threat at all. The system would have been infected, but the communications would have been prevented. Um, one last thing I want to talk about, when I, when I talk to clients about this, I hear a lot about um, our competitors uh, having cloud-based virtual emulation of malware. Uh, this is something Checkpoint has on the roadmap. Um, we feel our gateway-based solution is more than adequate right now, and we feel that there's some flaws in the gateway-based emulation in that you can't just automatically be sending data to the cloud for, for some of your sites. So we, at first, built this system. It will be, uh, on top of this, we will build, offer our clients a, a cloud-based emulation sandbox to ship files off to if it meets your regulatory slash compliance needs. So if you're interested in that, uh, let me know, and I could definitely keep you uh, on the radar so when that service is available. Okay. Excellent. Okay. David, I really appreciate your time today. We really appreciate sure. your time at Checkpoint. If you have any Definitely. questions, David or I are available, and uh, you guys have a great day. Good luck on the racing. Thanks, everyone.